This is Ethiopian opal with an unusual brown potch layer. Let's get started. We've got a lot to cover today. I'm sitting dry, so I'm wearing my respirator mask. I've got my big exhaust fan on, which blows the dust outside. Have you ever been in a dust storm? They're pretty impressive. My neighbors are from New York and probably have never seen one. I'm glad that I have this chance to help them with their bucket list. The honeycomb is right beneath this dark pot. Everybody loves Australian opal, right? Well, some don't like it because the prices are so high, but Ethiopian opal is different. Lots of people love it, but lots of people hate it. But even the most ardent Ethiopian opal haters really want one type of Ethiopian opal. Honeycomb. Oh, so you don't want one? Oh yeah, I know, Ethiopian opal cracks. Well, I don't blame you. Well, I do kind of blame you, because in your heart, you really do want one, and I know it. The reason that the honeycomb pattern is so appealing is the regularly spaced patches of color. I call these patches pips, but you may continue to call them patches of play of color if you like. So, for some reason, the regular spacing of color patches is pleasing to the eye. It's not only colorful and beautiful, but it appeals to the human desire for order. Think obsessive compulsive behavior on a non-pathologic level. I mean, normal people do like order, you know. You like order when your pictures are hanging straight on the wall. Probably because you look at them when you go to lock and unlock the door 20 times a night. But this regular spacing of pips or color patches is also a feature of the most sought after opal of all. Harlequin Black Opal from Lightning Ridge. Harlequin Opal is extremely rare and very expensive. Honeycomb Opal, on the other hand, is not really that rare. But if you want to cut one yourself, you have to know what to look for. And today I'm going to show you how to find a stone that has honeycomb potential. And I'm going to show you how to cut it to reveal that honeycomb pattern. For most cutters, honeycomb patterns just pop up when you're cutting Ethiopian opal. With this fantastic specimen, here's the moment I found it. Or rather, the moment it found me. Progressed a little further, and I take a look at this. It's a honeycomb pattern. I can tell you that I was pretty much clueless about how to find honeycomb patterns back then, but in cutting Ethiopian opal, I expected honeycomb patterns to reveal themselves, and I guess they did in this case, but I never actually thought about going to look for them. So what exactly are we looking for? Traces of honeycomb? No. We're looking for something that's much, much easier to find. Fingers. Opal fingers. This opal was purchased from three or four different sellers over a course of about three years, and I didn't ask any of them for honeycomb opal. Here's a nice piece of opal with some honeycomb potential. Finger-like processes embedded in potch, and you can see the fingertips at the top. That's what we want. Here's another piece. It's not as easy to see, but look closely. You'll see the fingers, you'll see the potch, and you'll see the fingertips embedded at the top. Another one, not quite as easy either. The potch is tiny, but the fingertips are there. Lots of nice fingers here, all the way around. But we've got the potch at the top and well-rounded fingertips also. Nice fingers, nice potch, and great fingertips. So I really like great fingertips. The pot is getting smaller and thinner. You can see the pot is almost gone. I just need to put a quick polish on it so we can see the result. The 
key to finding honeycomb pattern is to find the fingers then cut perpendicular to them down through the potch layer and this will reveal the honeycomb pattern does it matter how deep you go yes if you cut just past the tips the cells of the honeycomb will be small with a wide zone of potch surrounding them if you cut a little deeper the cells get bigger and the potch surrounding them gets more narrow the best patterns come when you cut even deeper so the cells are big and the potch is very thin when we cut opal we make domes we don't cut flat so what happens when we make a dome well what happens when you make a dome is the cells at the edges are bigger than the ones in the center it's just the way it goes you've gone deeper down so the cells get bigger simple as that if we go past this side view and get to the top view on top of here we see that there's the honeycomb pattern I believe that if I got a little bit deeper the cells of the honeycomb would be larger and it would be more beautiful as honeycomb but with this particular piece and even though this is a video about honeycomb opal I think that it's hard to recommend going past this point I may or may not do it so if you see that I've done it say hey I remember when he said he might do it that's cool huh it's not cool give me a break but anyway look at that Lately, I've been getting emails from people that I don't know. Well, duh. I mean, everybody gets emails from people they don't know. But these new emails are different. One recent email said something like, You're such a dynamic person and a great influencer and yada, yada, yada. The guy's obviously sucking up. But do they think that flattering me is going to win favor? Of course not. Well, maybe. Well, hell yeah. I love these guys. Am I really an influencer? Oh, so nice of you to say so. So they say that they want me to do product reviews in my videos. And if I do, I will be rewarded handsomely. I love that word, handsomely. Well, first of all, there's no influencing going on here. We've discussed the influencing business before. I'm not an influencer. Do they think that people are actually listening to me? Well. These guys may think that, but they're wrong. My viewers, well, the lights are on, but nobody's home. No influencing going on at Pulitzer Opal, and that's for sure. But there are other people contacting me. Let's just call them agents. They're different because basically they look like they want in. What they want is some sort of involvement in Pulitzer Opal, presumably to get money that they think I'm making. <laughs> okay, I'm going to give them a share. How about we give them 10% of all earnings? I wonder if these agents know how much 10% of zero is. But that reminds me. I recently sent $50,000 to a nice Nigerian lawyer who's handling the estate of my deceased cousin. I haven't heard from him in a while. He said that the paperwork was complete and that I'd be receiving the money soon. And with all the inflation going on, I could really use that 58 million right about now. Sheila, give Prince Mabeki a call and ask him what the holdup is on that wire transfer. And speaking of email, I was speaking of it, you all weren't really speaking of it. There have been a couple of Russian women who seem to want Sheila's job. Tatiana wrote, I watch your YouTube film and decide to meet you. You are a nice man. I love soldier. And she sent a photo. Well, we don't need another employee here. But she does seem to have a lot of the qualities that we look for here at Pulitzer Opal, if you know what I mean. Okay, enough email. I have to clear something up. A lot of you guys ask me if I'm really a colonel. And the answer is yes and no. What I am is, well, think Colonel Sanders. I mean, he's not a colonel in the military sense. He's more of a colonel of chicken. Me, I'm what you call a colonel of opal and other shiny rocks. The reason that I'm confessing is that my son tells me that there are military YouTubers making videos of guys who go to busy areas like Walmart and they dress up in military uniforms, you know, sort of to be adored as heroes. The military YouTubers ask them all sorts of questions that real soldiers would know, but they don't know the answers. And well, I don't want to go to the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show and have those military YouTubers embarrass me. I mean, I'm okay with embarrassment, but don't bug me when I'm looking at Opal. I mean, don't bug me at all.
So now that you know what kind of kernel I am, I hope you guys are happy. But I'd also like to point out that an opal kernel is higher in the pecking order than a kernel of chicken. End of rant. For the past few years, I've bought my good Ethiopian opal from Steve Newstrom of VillageSmithyOpals.com. Steve was nice enough to send me a huge 72 carat piece of beautiful Ethiopian opal with fingers. I took the stone and I ground down to expose a nice honeycomb pattern, which is really all I wanted to demonstrate. But then I said, I'm going to make some cabochons. So I cut along the diagonal crack that Steve and I both knew was there and to my dismay found a whopping big ball of sand. I drilled it out with my Dremel tube, but the prognosis was still bad. Undaunted, I attached both pieces to dop sticks and started to work them. Well, a guy can only take so much disappointment, you know? But I learned something. Do you know what happens when you throw a dop stick with an opal attached to it really hard? S Sheila, keep looking. You'll find it. The wonder of the beautiful cross-cut cabochon is Patty Messenger. The wonder of the meant to be dark base crystal opal is Patrick McGovern. Sheila's on her hands and knees for a couple of hours trying to find Steve Newstrom's opal, and she did, so we have two giveaway stones this year. Boy, her knees are sore. Oh wait. I'm not sure she has knees, but anyway, we've got a 4.98 carat honeycomb opal and the opal that I wouldn't cut again, 3.92 carats, both will be given away. To enter, use the word comb in a comment. Well, it's been an action-packed week here at Pulitzer Opal, honeycombs and flying opal. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you next time.